Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trey Boone's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Flagstaff Superlight 27 BHWS Bunkhouse Travel Trailer. You guys picked a cool unit here. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration. On your campsite, of course, your awnings. Leave plenty of room for them to come out. On your off campsite, your slides. Leave room for them to come in and out unhindered. Leave yourself a nice walking path. Because the next thing I need you to think about is where your power and water connections are going to be. Your docking station and your power are right behind your slide or behind your tires um, on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook your hitch. First thing you can do is get your unit level. Now I do recommend on units this big, close your slides up, find the center, put a stick on level on there. When you arrive at the campsite, have someone watch that while you lower or raise the unit, get it off your jack. Once you get it off your jack, kind of eye level it, and then we'll put down stabilizing jacks. If you don't have uh, power, you do have a manual override right here, and your hand crank for that is this silver one here. So you can get it up and down if you don't have power. Speaking of power, check your battery post when you arrive. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road. So once we get our unit level, we're gonna stabilize it. The unit has power stabilizing jacks. Make sure they've done the other side over there, it's controls. Right here. As I run these down, just gonna hit extend. I'm gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer. Uh, use your 10% off coupon, grab a four pack of those. Have someone put it down on the other side. Run these down, boom, just until they're taut. You don't wanna go anywhere past that. Remember, we've already got our unit level. All we're using these for is to stabilize it. So get your stabilizing jack pads down, run these down in front. Come right back here to your rear. See those coming down. Run those down as well. Once you got unit level and stable, we can go ahead and hook up our power and water. That's this big long 50 amp cord here. The way these new ones go on, they go in to the left, twist to the right, and then put on your black washer. Uh, should you need in your convenience pack, there's a 50 to 30 dog bone, they call it, amperage reducer. And then on the end of that, if you need to plug in a home, there's a 30 to 110 adapter that comes in the convenience pack as well. All right, we've got our power hooked up. Let's hook our water up. At the campsites, we're going to be hooking up here to city water connection. First and foremost, <clears throat> your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Use this when putting fluid into your unit. Hook that up, hook up your hose, but don't turn our hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. So over here on your campsite, behind your front door, is your 
hot water heater. All we're gonna do at this point, make sure our drain plug's back in. Before turning your water on, throw some plumber's tape on there. Get that in there nice and snug. Then you can go ahead and turn on your uh, water. After your water's been on for a little while, go inside and open up your spigots. Remember, you are level and stable. You can go ahead and open up your slides if you need to to get to those. Um, once those, no air coming out of the lines on those, uh, then you can go ahead and shut those spigots off and you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors. There is an electric element here. The only time you ever want to turn this on here is if you're hooked up to 110. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Come out here and check these reset buttons. If it's bubbled out, press that back in, and then your pressure release valve. So let's say we're gonna go camping, and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna go boondocking. We need to fill up our potable water tank. Well, in that case, the fresh water is just above. Potable fresh water. Fill that with the hose, no need for a uh, water pressure regulator. Two ways to tell when this is full, there is an overflow valve here, or on the inside where you check the levels of your battery and your other tanks, there's a fresh water tank. That can also tell you when this is full. So remember now, when using potable water is when you're gonna wanna turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water, that's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up to camp, and I'm gonna go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. We have a night docking light here. Again, our fresh water, cable, satellite, tank flush. We'll talk about that when dumping our black tanks. And here is your antifreeze inlet. Fresh water drain. If you're using potable water, that's where you drain that. There is our dump station, black and gray handles. Coming around the rear of the unit, your spare tire with a cover. This access panel underneath your bunks accessory hitch ladder utilize it go up there a couple times a year uh, check the seams on your roof caulk as needed maintain that roof you are also prepped for a Furion backup camera it's a device you can purchase from our store that sits on the dash of your tow vehicle electronically communicates with that giving you a backup camera for the unit there's a couple places to grill out here you have this kitchen here, quick connect LP, pull your hose out, and it will connect right there. You have 110 out here, some lighting, and an electric fridge. You enter your doorway, your awnings, I haven't ran them all the way out. But you do have two awnings. I want to show you something here real quick. Let's say your picnic table is sitting right here. You have these pitch adjusts. It is raining. You can pull on this pitch adjust. That is going to tilt your awning. That's going to run all your rainwater away from your camp area. A uh, vent for your microwave. You have a porch light and a couple of outdoor speakers. Inside your storage up here is a table and a griddle that sets out here. Quick connect LP here as well. There's your main low point drain from when we're leaving the campsite. And you are also prepped for a TV out here, 110 and cable. This is a flue for your, mic or for your furnace. If you run your furnace, steer clear of that, it'll get rather warm. It's a manual override. That bottom crank right there for your slides. Again, your hot water heater. Your big pass-through storage. There's the griddle and table I talked about. It's actually two tables. This griddle actually set on top of the other one in the box. Your propane has a cover. It comes on a regulator. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. Green means you've got gas. Again, your battery terminals. Keep an eye on those. Open those when you need them. Keep an eye on them. You do have another docking light. That is how you pass through storage. Now you do have two dump areas on this. You have a black and gray in the front, and then you have this extra gray, galley gray tank up here. 
and one more storage access. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look on the inside. Coming up inside your unit here, first thing I like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. I'm going to tuck right around the corner here, come all the way over here to your control panel real quick. I'm going to turn on your awning, porch, and step lights. So you all of them working. Here's your awning. Step lights that little light there, and there's your porch light. Speaking of your awnings, as I said, I haven't ran that all the way out yet. I'm going to show you how far to take those out. You only want to run that out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see your black bar. Now it will extend further, so keep an eye on it when you run them out. Run them back in for you here real quick. Continues to retract. Talk some more about your control panel here. All right. So you do have a Wi-Fi booster here. You can turn on. There's the Wi-Fi Ranger uh, information. Step lights, interior lights, porch lights, your two slides, your two awnings, front and rear. Up here is where you turn on your uh, tank heaters if you're in inclement weather. To the left of that, your water pump if you're using potable water. Your water heater if hooked up to gas, your water heater if hooked up to electric. There is a difference. Over here is your uh, spots to check your levels. Here's your battery. There's your fresh water. That's one I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Your black and gray tanks. Uh, over to the right. Google Play. Get the app. You can control everything from your phone. Slides, awnings, lights. You know, it also comes with a TPMS system. I will send you a separate video on how to hook up that tire pressure monitoring system. Here's your television. Crank that up real quick. As I turn that on, I want to show you, let's swivel this out, where your cable goes in. There's a little button. It has a green light. Make sure that green light's on before running your digital channel scan. It'll help you pick up more channels. See the light from here. All right, TV working. IRV technology sound system. Remote for that as well, as well as your fireplace. Uh, Bluetooth, AM, FM, see if we can pick yeah, up the like channel. Else. Like, no. So three zones, whatever's but blue is on, indoors, days. the front bedroom, or outdoors, or you can have all three on. Also really smart, like a strategic move to make Modes, sure. you can put your TV audio through it, front audio, AM, FM, Bluetooth, DVD, CD player, really nice. Fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. Um, I can turn it on and show it, make it brighter or dimmer. But the biggest thing now is the heat. If it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, I can feel it already. Um, instead of using up your gas to warm it up in here, if you're at the campsite, use their electricity. Turn this on and you'll get it toasty in here in no time. Stand on the floor over here. 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Reason I mentioned this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day, if you're out boondocking, nothing plugged in charging your battery, uh, disconnect your battery to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. Next to that, access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Ton of 15s in there, a five, couple 30s. Highly recommend having those with you when you go camping. Your Magic Chef fridge with a safety transport lock, self-explanatory microwave, you have a light and a fan, 
Your glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Put that up like that. Turn on your panel light. Turn this to high. Hit your spark and there's your flame. So same thing on your oven. Turn this to the light button. Hit your spark down here. No need for a pilot light anymore. That'll light it. Then just set it to the desired temperature. Click your panel light down. You have an oven light. The kitchen here is 110 with GFCI reset. Back in your bedroom. Of course, your other steps for heading outside. TV backer. So is prep for a TV back here. 110 and USB ports on both sides of the bed. You have a hand crank open vent here. This is, a, is an extension. And two clips on the back will clip on here and give you extra prep area. And this is just your inverter. Travel. Make sure that this is snap back for travel. Same thing uh, in the bedroom. Make sure you, or bathroom, make sure your door is closed. Nice. Do you have a lot of individual lighting here? Your table will fold down, set on these. Put your back cushions on, on that, it gives you an extra bed. Show you quickly how to turn this one into a bed. Remove your Velcro cushions. Stand in the middle. Open these up. Pull the back forward. And just that quickly, you get out of the sleeping quarters. Reverse the process to put everything back. Talk about your solar panel. Um, I'm going to send a separate video on this and it is going to tell you how to set everything up Your main concern here is you want to make sure that you are on flooded battery everything else It's just going to make sure that your battery doesn't get overcharged by your solar power So this your thermostat Let's go ahead and Go to Remote. Okay, system. System cool. If I can get AC to come on. AC on there. AC kicks on. And you shut the AC mode. Oil and low off. When you shut the AC off, that shuts off rather quickly. And when I go to your heat, get to the mode here. And off system heat turn our heat on heat took a second to turn on but when you shut the heat off the heat always takes a little bit longer to shut off the fans do than the AC unit and your bathroom your lighting you have a hand crank open Power exhaust fan with four different settings. Make sure that this is snapped back for travel. Maintain your plumbing. Just like you would at home, but more so because you are in a uh, house that you're bouncing down the road. So that about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite. First thing I like to do, in case I did forget to mention, I'm sure you probably are, already know that this is 
storage area. I like to come to my control panel. I'll shut off all those exterior lights. Shut off my interior light button. And then I can walk through and see all the individual lighting that I need to shut off. A lot of this is one touch lighting throughout the unit. So once we know we've shut off every light we can, go back, turn on our interior lighting. And I'm gonna say doors and drawers. Make sure that all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing to impede your slides from coming in. And start running them in. Number one's your living room. I'm gonna stop that where it's at. You may wanna start by running number two in because that way you can Watch your bedroom slide come in. Make sure nothing's in the way of that coming in. Now I'll run number two in. Excuse me, number one. Of course, make sure that that extension is off the end there. This will not close with that there. And we're in. Shut off our interior lights. Exit the unit. Now, these solid steps, you gotta make sure that this exterior door is all the way open, otherwise this will catch on it. Simply lift that up, set it inside. Lock and deadbolt your door. You don't want the horror story of your door coming open. Go ahead and swing that around. Now at this point, we're gonna unhook our cable, our water and our power. We're gonna come to the low point drain, open up both of those. For your hot water heater, you're gonna lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna shoot a lot of hot water out of there. So be careful, once it's done, snap that back down or your door won't close. And then you can pull your drain plug. If we're out camping in, we're boondocking. We come around and pull the, this other low point drain. A white one back here. Freshwater drain. Hook up a hitch and head up to the dump station. Park accordingly at the dump station. You do have two dumps. One located here. One located behind your tires. We do have big, stronger, longer uh, hoses that you can hook up and make a Y, but you have to start in the back because you want to dump your sewer first. So hook your sewage up here. First thing you do is pull that black handle. Now, if that black handle sounds like it's no longer draining, you're gonna come up here, again with your water pressure regulator, hook, that, hook up the hose at the dump station. With that black handle open, let that run for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash out your black tank, get all that nastiness out of there. Unhook that, close your black handle, pull your gray handle. Gray handle's gonna be cleaner water, it's just inching your showers. That'll clean the sewage hose out a little bit for you. Head on up to this gray tank, pull that handle, dump that gray one. Again, that's gonna be cleaner water, it's just inching your showers. Clean your sewage hose out for you, and then you can conveniently store your sewage hose right in your bumper. Nice sanitary place for it. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this flagstaff for many years to come. Happy camping.